Hello and welcome to another episode of Grange TV. It's not a full episode. We're here to discuss UFC 255, the main event, uh, Figueredo versus Perez. And uh, want to know, guys, what you think about this, this kind of like a bit of a breakdown, a bit of a prediction, a bit of just our opinion. We're interested to see what you guys think. Write it down in the comments. Tell us what you think. Tell us who you think will win and why, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And let's kick off. What do you think? I'm How do you see it going? What do you think? What are the What's the SWATS analysis for each of the fighters? Uh, first off, I'm very, very impressed. Fab with the with the pronunciation. Figueredo. Figueredo and Perez. Perez. Yes, very impressed for all our um South American fans out there. Here's a, here's a little bit of interesting information for you. I can speak Spanish fluently and I can understand Portuguese, but Eli can speak Portuguese. Yeah. Can you tell people how it came about that you spoke Portuguese? Um I was just when I was younger, I, I had the opportunity to go to Brazil for a bit of a bit of a trip. Um I had a friend that lived over there and I just sort of got, got stuck there. So for around 10 years, I lived in Brazil on and off. I'd usually spend six months in Brazil, six months in Australia. I'd do that for around 10 years until I met my wife and um, moved back to Australia. His wife's Brazilian. Yeah, so she speaks English and that as well. But at home, because of the kids, we try to just keep everything Portuguese. Um, yeah, so. Because of Eli's English, they speak Portuguese at home. <laughs> that's that's how bad Eli's English is. Um, that's Probably a fact, yeah. <laughs> so, how do you see this for going? What do you, if you're, what, what do you think? Who do you see as a favorite going in for you? For you, not um, what the odds makers make, whatever. Da, da, da. When you watch it, like who do you see as a favorite for you? Davison, why? Frigadero, for sure. But he, the uniqueness of his knockout power in the flyweight division, that is the reason why he, that's what separates him from the other flyweights, I feel. He can put people to sleep. And he looks like he's like at least one day weight division above him. Yeah. And he's a strong dude. Like it just is explosive. Um, he's got the te- he, he he's makes, got technique to go with it. Yeah, 100%. But he makes the flight weight division interesting. Again, like it's very interesting. Um, I'm really looking forward to this fight because we have a Perez who is, a, do you know what I mean, a, a grindy wrestler. With overhand right and uh and loves to get in there and bang but he also has a, a calf kick which has been devastating to to some of his fights which has changed the game in that a bit, little bit as well but i just i, I davison i just feel there's that power if perez wants to get in that zone in that range and make it a turn the fans on and throw with him he, i think it would be too much for him one of the things that i find i'm going to just speak about davison for a little bit his strengths that I see, they he's a switch hitter, yeah, which is rare in MMA for people to actually do it, but do it effectively. Like a lot of people switch stances and this and that, but they look more like they're just unsure of what to do rather than they're actually plotting something. Whereas the vessel can hit you hard. Like he hit Benavides, if I'm not mistaken, with a like a check hook with his right hand from a southpaw stance and dropped him. Right with this kind of like check, but he was, he was being aggressive with it, and he came over the top and hit him with it. And then throughout the fight, he'd hit him with lead rights and looping rights around the side, lefts as well. So to have that power from both stances, where you don't know where it's coming from, and then if you go to the ground with him, he's good, man. Yeah, and he's got that good crazy ass guillotine that he has, coupled with, you know what it is? Well, he's got a, a lever advantage over the other flyweights because he's taller usually and bigger. And he's just super strong guy. And you're usually not shooting in like Tim Elliott when he's shot in. You're usually shooting in on the basis of the, in the back of your mind, knowing that he has the power to knock you out. So you want to get out of the way of those shots. Um, that's one of the things he's got, like a few spinning back kick attacks and that, that he does as well, which really throw people off. But that also comes off the fact that he can switch his stance. Yeah. When you're switching stance like that, and then you're starting to throw punches and kicks from different areas, it's um, it's hard to keep a track on. And they're coming with power. They're coming with heat, which you don't often see in the flyweight division. Then on the ground, man, he's very, 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 very capable on the ground. Very, very good. But so is Perez. He has some Absolutely. really good submissions. Absolutely. Um, 
on the ground. Do you think Perez will have to be more hesitant with his takedowns because of Figueiredo's guillotine? Because he, he he loves to sort of go in that sort of nearly a wrestling stance, that overhand right, and then you switch and go that single leg. Do, do you think he'll have to be more hesitant on his takedowns because, or do you think his level of wrestling and submission would submission defense would be because a guillotine is a tough, it's a tough submission to get against someone like a good wrestler with good head position. Yeah. Again, that, that all depends on, cause Tim Elliott's a good wrestler. And I think it all depends on how you enter it all depends. If, if you're going in there, you've been hurt or you're already kind of like wary of his power and you're like, I don't want anything to do with this. I'm getting this takedown come hell or high water. You might put yourself into a bad position. Uh, Perez looks like the thing with Perez is he seems is, is an interesting conversation. Actually, I had with uh, Brandon Ravel, who's fighting um, Brandon Moreno in the in the in the last fight of the preliminaries. Which actually, I want to start the um, fight companion a little bit early because I want to catch their last fight. I want to do that because that's going to be a cracker fight. Yeah. But he was speaking about who he feels he matches up best with. And he actually said to me, he feels that he matches up better with Devesen than he does with Alex Perez. And I said, why is that? And he said to me, because um, Figgy brings it. He'll bring the fight and that creates openings. Whereas Perez, he feels, and this is his words, and I'm paraphrasing a tad, feel free to watch the whole podcast. It's on Grange TV. But he feels that Perez is able to control the fight more, slow it down and make it boring if he has to. So I feel that Perez is not going to, in answer to your question, is not going to be diving in, shooting double legs to avoid the power. I think what he's more than likely to do is go for those calf kicks, yep. which the, he's kind of open for. Davison's kind of open for those 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 calf kicks, those those leg kicks. Kind of stands upright. His legs are a little bit closer together. Um, and he doesn't seem to check him in as much as he tries to get out of the way per se. So I, I feel that Perez's best thing to do is leg kicks, grapple, takedowns, yes, but on his own, he doesn't have to come in and, and try and um, shoot, you know, yep. shoot or die. You know, he, he can hit the leg kicks, he can shoot a double leg, back out of the double leg, get in that punching range, turn the fans on, as you say, get out and rinse and repeat it. And what I'd like to see is, one, what that's going to do to Devesen, knowing that he has to make 125. Yeah. You know, he is- has to make 120. He's missed it before. And what that's going to look like in the later rounds. Mm. Is he going to be able to wear on him? Is he going to be able to, to, to slow him down? So, yes, he can guillotine him if Perez either gets too tired or Perez dives in trying to avoid it. But I think that Perez is the kind of guy that, that can bide his time and try and hurt him with leg kicks, body shots, and just try and slow him down. But I really think that Devison's power is something special in that division. Yeah. I and think, his size as well. I think what he also does really well is when he stalks his opponent down, we've talked about it on, on previous podcasts where you can get trapped into following the person. He does a really good job of cutting off that that cage and keeping that pressure on, on his opponent. Um, so I think that will be very interesting. If if Perez does try to slow it down a little bit too much, then I think um, Figueroa will start to go after him, cut that cage off, and start to pressure him, and then and then the power. He doesn't power definitely he, comes into play then. A couple of the things that he does when when he does that uh, with, with the cutting off the cage, I think the, the the advantage that he can hit from both stances yeah. is very 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 important at cutting off the cage. And he's got those spinning attacks, like that spinning back kick. If you if you go to if you try and rush the angle to get away from him, he's got that spinning back kick that that he can bring either corral you back in or hit you with it. Um, and I don't know if you notice it with him, he rarely retreats, which is one of the things I was saying this in the fight when we were doing the last fight companion. Some people win all the real estate, and then without the person working their way out of it, they retreat. Yeah. There's, and and so you've got the person all the way up to the cage, and then you retreat and you let the person you off it, the yeah, cage, yep. yeah, right? Now he does not let people off the cage. He does not take a backward step. He'll take a backward step if he wants to, but once he's got you on that cage, 
and he's not he's he's watching you and he's not letting you go and he's got very very good killer instincts on the ground if he gets you on your back i think he you're in a lot of trouble with him yeah no he's definitely dangerous everywhere and unique power but his accuracy as well some of the, I mean them them power shots that he throws hits you on the button and drops you and so, perez what do you think about perez what what are his perez i think would have to do what you just mentioned before he needs to sort of stay on that outside them calf kicks i feel is the what he needs to utilize the most to get a win he needs to be able to disable um figadero do you mean his movement and them calf kicks i think is what he needs to utilize the most um it's dangerous there is if perez is really launching forward when he's trying to end times that that calf kick then he's in a vulnerable stage but I feel like that's what he needs to do. The takedown, dangerous. But I still feel, I feel Perez would be able to, if if he can start to get that takedown, he's very good on the ground as well. And then he could control from the top, which we haven't seen, do you know what I mean? Davison on his back. So I think I think Perez is is definitely the underdog in this, but I think that he's got the abilities to make this a much closer fight than people think, um, especially if he can start causing damage early on with with those calf kicks and bringing that wrestling game in. I think if it starts to get in the later rounds, I like Perez in yeah. the later rounds. I, I don't know if he can see the later rounds with Davis. He, he, he's got to see the later rounds yeah. without have eaten a lot of damage. You know what I mean? If he's eaten a lot of damage, Going into the later rounds, then it's not it's not going to benefit him being in the later rounds like yep. that. Yep. Um, yeah. So if you had to make a call, no, I'm 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 going Frigadero. I'm a big fan of his. Um, I think he makes the the flyweights very exciting. Um, very impressed by all of his wins. So I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with Frigadero. I think his power will be too much. He'll be too explosive. He will walk him down, and I think end up finishing him in the second third round. I more or less agree, eh? Yeah. I, I think we'll probably see it. Uh, yeah, I think it'll be second or third round stoppage. I think Alex is going to be very, very, very game, and I think he's going to aim to do that damage. But if if I'm in if I'm in Davison's corner, I know that that those calf kicks are what he's going to come with. Mm. Um, and you'd have to have prepared for it. You'd have and this this uh, yeah you'd you'd have to kind of. You know that that's what's coming. Yeah, he's heavy on that lead leg. Is is um, Figueredo? Yeah, yeah, he has a, he has a little bit of a different stance. It's a little bit more narrower. It's not, but so he much goes a wide stance. as well sometimes. Yeah, it's, it's but he mixes it up as well. So he yeah. switches. He, it's, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting if if Perez can start to get them calf kicks off early. Um, I think we'll make it a little bit more of an interesting fight. But obviously. Figured out on that they have a game plan. They know what Perez is bringing to the table, and they'll have a game plan for that. But I feel he'd be too strong and get the knockout. Guys, let us know what you think, how, when, why, in what fashion. Put it down in the comments. We'll try and get back to everyone. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much, guys.